I started doing the relief prints uh, on the house that I grew up. My parents ended up selling the whole property. And there was this one big, beautiful maple tree in the, in the middle of the, uh, of the front yard. And it was, I can just remember growing up on it and climbing it. And we had the tire swing and we had a tree fort on it. And if there's one way to encapsulate its life and celebrate it and bring it with me wherever I go, this was the method to do it, is doing these uh, relief prints. And I've had people come to me at shows uh, asking me if they could do trees from their cottage or from their house because there's ash borer, there's some problem that the tree has to come down and this is the main reason why I do the prints. I'm Marco Berkowski, I am uh, I'm a woodworker and an artist and I make them. I had a double major in art history and European studies and I spent quite a few years in Europe traveling around and uh, taking odd jobs working at a school in Switzerland, which I still do. And then some friends started asking me to do uh, some odd jobs and some favors for them. And one actually recommended entering an art project that reused um, waste materials in a sculpture. So I did that and I ended up winning quite a few things. And then through Instagram and whatever online paths, I came across this one artist. His name's Brian Nash Gill. And um, he makes tree ring relief prints. And, the instant I saw the video, I fell in love and I figured out, I wanted to figure out how to do it. Um, I started experimenting with different inks and papers. I think it was like 50 types of paper until I perfected the craft or what I think is close to that. Um, and then this all started in Italy and I started selling the prints in Helsinki on a road trip. And when I came back to Canada, I started um, selling online through my website and then through pop-up shops and craft fairs. People ask me if I can do prints from their cottage or from their house if a tree's coming down for whatever reason. I do that and then as a woodworker I have a lot of colleagues that uh, have wood mills and, and sawmills and log yards. So I'd go there with my chainsaw and walk the hundreds of logs and kind of just find um, interesting pieces. Along with the art, I am a woodworker by trade and I've, um, specifically cabinet tree and cabinet making and furniture. Uh, and then because I like to keep busy and um, flexible in my life, I also work at a boarding school in Switzerland. So I've been there for 10 years and I'm a housemaster and I teach sports and lead expeditions. And so I find there to be a really nice balance from being self-employed, uh, working with wood, being alone a lot of the time to being in a, in a boarding school environment, being surrounded by kids uh, for three months of the year. And through that, I've been, it's been 10 years, almost all of my 20s I've been traveling. Um, many places I got the bug. And uh, Suka comes with me everywhere so she gets on the plane um, and she's been an awesome companion. I make art and I and I chose my lifestyle to be self-employed um, because I just don't believe in the nine to five uh, three weeks of vacation a year lifestyle and there are challenges but um, the freedom to be able to do what I want when I want supersedes all of that and I think any artist there's a balance between struggling and being successful and losing the motivation. And um, because this is a passion for me, the art, I don't, uh, I don't need to do it. I do it because I love doing it. And um, so I'm selective in the shows that I do or the, how, or the way that I sell them and the people I sell them to. And I think there's value in that. And that's what keeps me invigorated um, and, and happy. And I think you need to be happy to, to make things that you love.